I'm Cynthia James, and this network is about changing lives one woman at a time. Hello, and welcome to Women Awakening. I'm your host, Cynthia James, and I get the honor of introducing you to fabulous women, women who are change makers, women who are taking their life in their hands, activating their courage, and stepping out to make a difference on this planet. What I want you to know is that they're way showers. You know, they're examples of what's possible when we all step into our power and claim our brilliance and our excellence and our joy. So we do these every week. You meet another fabulous woman. We're on um, iHeart. We're on Spreaker. We're on Spotify. We're on Amazon. We're on video on YouTube. Come back every week, meet another woman and learn from them because they're all importing, uh, imparting great wisdom. You can also go to CynthiaJames.net. That's where I have a lot of stuff and gifts in my newsletter. Be happy to support you. So let me introduce my guest today. Her name is Celeste Houston, a.k.a. Coach C. <laughs> she's a podcaster. She's an entrepreneur and a trailblazer. And she's a woman of many accomplishments. In 2014, she became a certified and full-time life coach. She also has an online shop selling quality handbags, accessories, and t-shirts. It's called YSJ Bags and Accessories. And um, she will be launching her upcoming book in the next 90 days. What I want to tell you is that she has a heart of service. She currently serves as the board of Kiwanis of Greater South Cobb. She served as a president for two years. And in the capacity of a life coach, transition trainer at Sweetwater Mission. And she previously coached at Forever Free Outreach in Marietta, Georgia. What I want you to know is that she says that her services include counseling for drug addiction, career development, leadership development, relationship challenges, family disputes, conflict resolution, and spiritual guidance, because she also serves as an associate pastor at Mosaic Mapleton in Mapleton in Georgia, and she leads a weekly prayer meeting. So, Celeste, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so happy to be on here, Cynthia. Um, thank you for the invite. I want to welcome those who are online that will listen to this podcast. I pray that you receive something um, because I come to impart, to encourage, to inspire, to ignite. Um, that's what I say. That's my mission is to and to educate. Right. Um, and when you talk about a woman of hope, uh, you're looking at hope. I was a teenage mom. I had my first child at the age of 14. By the time I graduated from high school at 17, I had two children pregnant uh, with my third child. So when you talk about hope, you were looking at hope. Your situation, whatever you're going through is not hopeless. There is hope. But guess what it takes? Hard work and perseverance. Absolutely. So you know, I usually ask about, you know, how do people grow up? And you just kind of gave us a, a glimpse. So I want to say to be pregnant at 14 and to have three children while you're in your teens, did you have support? Did you have guidance or were you kind of on your own? Well, you know what? I had my mom. My mom was, she was there. Um, my mother was a divorcee because mo that's the question most people ask. How could you be pregnant at that age? Who were you, who was there? My mother, she was there, but she worked three jobs. Um, she was she was divorced. She so she did what she could. So I don't blame that on her. I blame that on the decisions that I made. But in looking back, I believe that everything has a purpose in life. Uh, I believe everything happens on purpose 
for a purpose and because we're created with a purpose. Right. And so with that, yeah, those decisions that I made, uh, because, you know, being alone, feeling empty, um, just wanting to be loved. My dad wasn't around. He had his own issues. Um, but um, yeah, my mom, she supported me. And, uh, you know, it, it wasn't easy. Um, I, I think one of the things that um, I think people have a myth about uh, is that teenage pregnancy, that that's the worst thing could happen. But teenage pregnancy is not the worst thing could happen. Uh, it could be in hindrance, but it's not the worst thing. I was listening to Sarah J. Uh, Sarah J. Roberts. And she talked about being pregnant at such a, a young age. And her daddy was the bishop uh, of this mega church and how she felt alone, you know, and I, she had a conversation, she and her mom and her mom cried. She said, I didn't know you felt that way. You know, what could I have done? And she said, I don't blame you. And I think that's what we have to get to the point of not blaming other people, you know? Yeah, uh -huh. I was young. So. Yeah. But you know what, what's, what's interesting about that is like human beings are survivors. <laughs> we find a way to survive mental, emotional, spiritual, physical issues. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if your mom is working three jobs to, to eat, keep a roof over your head and, and take care of you, and you have no father there, then you are going to find a way to feel connected, feel whatever, you know, that, that mm -hmm. then can end up in a pregnancy. But it was all about, from my perspective, is like all about, it's like, what can I do to fulfill the need that lives within me? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's what, it's all about, you know, like you said, fulfilling that need. And um, it didn't click until after that third child, though. And right. the need was the children. They felt that was the need uh, of feeling loved, of feeling wanted. And mm -hmm. that's crazy to think that way. But that's what happened for me, because from that point, I knew I had a mission in life. Right. And my mission in life was not to be the statistic, not to be the teenage mom who never graduated or went to college or anything like that. So uh, that was my mission in life was right. to show my children, despite the adversity, despite the decisions or whatever, um, they were wanted and you could do anything if, that you put your mind to. Yes. Well, I love that. So, so talk to me because, because you've made this decision now, you're going to take care of these children. Mm -hmm. So what steps did you start taking to start fulfilling your mission? Well, once, like I said, I was, I graduated at the age of 17. Um, so what I wind up doing is um, I want, I wind up going to college. I went to a junior college um, to, to further my education and why I was, um, going to school, I took a job. Um, so I worked, <laughs> this is crazy. I worked at midnight. So my mother had my children from midnight. And when I got, uh, got off of work, uh, I went to school for a couple of hours a day to get my associate's degree. Uh, so those are the steps to be financially stable, um, is going to get my education and working a job. Yes. And, and so that was what I did. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, tenacity personified for sure. So talk to me about, you know, what made you want to become, uh, uh, well, first of all, how long have you been a pastor? I have been a pastor, well, I've been in ministry for, um, I guess, 20 years. I've been in ministry for 20 years. Uh, so, but uh, what made me, I was um, bestowed the pastoral. Uh, I am um, 
you know, in my church, I'm one of the associates pastors there. I have been in ministry for 20 years. And so, you know, that's what happened. It's well, a, and, it's and so clearly, you know, your relationship with God, you know, was feeding oh, your yeah. soul while you're doing, taking care of the kids and working and getting educated. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so, so what made you want to become a life coach? To be honest, I always wanted to be a social worker. Ah, I, yes. I always wanted to be a social worker. So when I start going to school and I told my dad, I said, I would like to be a social worker. And he said, why would you want to be a social worker? They don't make any money. You know, they don't make money. So why would you want to be a social worker or a teacher? Um, so I was like, OK, well, maybe he's right. Um, but I always had a need to help people. I always want wanted to help the person that needed help, you know. And um, I worked in a job uh, in procurement. I was the I held a position, several positions in directorship of procurement. I worked at uh, long term care, uh, acute care, uh, and even a nursing home. Uh, in directorship. So I procured all the medical supplies and equipment. Um, I was over staff, um, over 20 people. And at 55 years old, they told me I I had been at the company for what, 17 years? And they decided to uh, restructure the, um, the, 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 the department and my position was restructured. So mm-hmm. therefore, I did not have a job. So I searched. I was going to go relocate to uh, a different part of town. And you know what? It just hit me, Cynthia. You know, I want to do what I want to do. I don't have any children. I don't have any children at home. I'm an empty nester. I want to help people. I want to do something that I feel good about. I want to I want to do something that no one could tell me what to do. There was no need more because I had my savings. I had savings um, and I was in a position where I could start doing something that I wanted to do. And one of the ladies that I was volunteering for asked me, Celeste, do you want to be a life coach? Because I was I was volunteering at a homeless shelter, right? And that's how I became a life coach. Well, what what I love about that is, you know, there's something in your story that's a thread. You know, when you had the third child, you made a decision to go forward and and be productive and support your children. Now you're at another crossroads. Mm -hmm. where you get to say, what do I really want to do? What's going to really support my soul? So I love that, that there's something in you that that actually pauses and says, what's the next step that's going to benefit me and my family? I I just think that's great. So, okay, go ahead. So, you know what, Cynthia, I think when when you when when you have a purpose i i know everyone has a purpose and i think sometimes we as we grow older we can e- get complacent when we think that we can only do one thing because that's what we've been doing for the last 30 years 40 years but i think that our purpose evolves yes it, we we are evolving people and when you come to the mindset of evolving there's an old song that says everything changes. Nothing stays the same. So when you look at even the weather, the seasons change. And as people, we change. And in order to uh, be a change agent, you have to want to change. That's right. And that's what, you know, that's what I've always wanted to do. You know, I don't have me more. What is it that you want to do, Celeste? What makes your soul ignite what what are you passionate about and so you know that's one of the things that I see um that sometimes we get so caught up in 
I've never done that before, but that's okay. <laughs> trailblazers, when you are a trailblazer and a trendsetter, guess what? You're the first one. You are the right. pattern setter. Go ahead and do it. Even if you fail, do it. Well, some of the greatest athletes, actors, teachers, philosophers have all said the same thing. Everybody falls. The thing is, do you get up and what do you do when you get up? Yes. You know, so. All right. So I have a couple of questions. The first is tell me about YSJ bags and accessories. And how okay. did that come to life? That came to life. That's one of those things that uh, when I had that downtime, I love, I'm a woman who love handbags. I love purses. So one day I was sitting at home and I was looking at all of these designer bags. And now I'm no longer buying designer bags because, you know, I got to be a little bit frugal now, you know. And I was like, mm, I know I'm not the only woman that love handbags. So I started looking at uh, bags online, looking at my the bags that my friends carried, something unique. And you know what? I said, I'm going to start just, I'm going a, I'm, I'm to a dip my toe in this and see how it works for me. So I start having these uh, pop-up shops and uh, selling uh, bags online. And um, I, I'm, I'm a native from St. Louis. So I went back and I did a little ministry, but I had my vendor set up there, had some vendors set up. And, you know, I really like to see women who love a good bag, a quality bag. It's, it's, it's a quality bag, inexpensive, but it, it just gives me joy. You know, now I give bags away every time I turn around, I'm giving a bag away, yeah. but that's what it was. Um, and YSJ is y'all see Jesus. That's what it stands for. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. So can you tell me, you got a book coming out. What's this book about? My book is, is called uh, Living, Purposefully, Living Purposefully, Not Perfect. Ah. Ah, you know. And so I use the analogy that when you take a picture, when you take a picture, you take about 15 shots before you get the right, the perfect picture. Right. And in life, that's what we think life is all about, is having these different shots to make it perfect. Life is not perfect, but it's purposeful. Yes. yes. And that's what I'm, I'm, you know, that's what that's my message. Living a life that matters. That means living purposefully. Well, yeah. And you know, what's great about this is your whole life experience has given you a lot of wisdom, uh, choices and, and, and some that are supportive and some that aren't and, 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 and moving forward beyond the circumstances, all of that stuff is a part of your purpose being fulfilled. Because if you hadn't gone through all those things as a younger person, you wouldn't have the wisdom today to be able to, A, coach people or write a book saying, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. As no. long as you clear that you are being guided and supported throughout this whole entire process. Yes, yes. And 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 so that's my message is living a life that's purpose, purposeful, you know? And um, when we find that out, because, you know, sometimes people over 50 really don't know what their purpose is. You know, they don't know why they were created. Why am I here? You know, uh, I think most women at some point thought I was only here to be a mother, a wife. And to be honest, Cynthia, uh, when I was in high school, that was the only thing that I could see myself being was yeah. a mother, a wife, having a house, you know, coming to the point of having to be belong to someone because I, I, I didn't know if I was good enough on my own or if I could make it on my own. You know, uh, in my mind, uh, the white picket fence, the husband coming home and, 
you know, me taking care of the house, the children. That's all I could see. And this is so funny. On my 60th birthday, I had to... I had to laugh at myself and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you gave me more than I expected, Mm. more than I even dreamed for myself. That is so beautiful. That is so, but you know what? Here's the thing. If you are awake and aware, you see that there are miracles occurring all the time yes. guiding you all yes. the time yes 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 and that but the you the, you said the key word if you are awake yes so many times people are sleepwalking because of the trauma you know yes being a teenage mom it was traumatic there was trauma but i thank god that there were people along the way. Uh, You know, my mother was there. People, you know, when I was in school, my principal, he would say, Miss Houston, I know it's hard for you, but you can make it. You know, it was people. And I think that along the way, there are people in our lives. It's like running a marathon. Somebody's standing on the sideline giving you water. Someone is telling you, hey, you could make it. Come on, they're cheering you on. And But you have to be awoke. You have to be awoke to see it. If yeah. not, you won't see it. You, you'll you right. be sleepwalking. Right. Well, what I love about that, I, I call those people that you just described earth angels. <laughs> They're the ones who are like, how about you go over here instead of going over there? <laughs> how about you do that, right? All right, so Celeste, tell us, how do we find you? How do we find your work? I'm on all social platforms. You mm-hmm. could find me on Instagram at MSY Houston. You can find me, uh, Celica uh, Coaching uh, Ministry on Facebook. You can also find me as YSJ Bags and Accessories on Facebook. I'm on Clubhouse. Uh, So I do do Clubhouse um, every every other week. Uh, A couple of coaches and I, we get on Clubhouse and we go through the scriptures. We um, we talk about trending topics with with a scriptural uh, thread. So we do do that on Clubhouse and it's called Strength in Christ. Um, so you can find me there. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, so I, if if you Google me, I'm, I, I'm even on um, YouTube. Celeste Great. Houston. Well, Celeste, you're just delightful. I'm so grateful that you're here. So I ask the same last question of all my guests. This show is called Women Awakening. Mm-hmm. What do you think is the most important reason for women to be awake on this planet in this moment? You know what? Mother's Day is coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you asked that question because for those who are not mothers, we are daughters, we are sisters. If you are not awoke uh, for for your sister or your aunties, guess what? You will not be able to pass the baton of knowledge and wisdom and love on to the next generation. So it's imperative that you are awake for the next person. That's very important. That is so powerful. Well, Celeste, I am so grateful that you've been here, that you brought your wisdom, and I just want to applaud your tenacity. I keep using that word because it's it's the word that keeps popping in, that your willingness to keep moving beyond circumstances so that you make a difference on this planet. It's quite an honor to know you. Thank you. Thank you. It's such an honor to know you too, Cynthia. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, on today. So ladies, I always say the same thing at the end of the show in a different way. This is what I want you to know. You are worthy. You are important. You are powerful. You are so loved that 
the universe, God, spirit, Jesus, whatever you choose to call it, breathe its life into you to come onto this planet to bring joy, to bring peace, to be in service, to 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 remind people of how beautiful and powerful they are. Do not take for granted this life that you have been given because you're here for a reason. I'm so grateful to have been with you. I love being with you every week and I will see you soon. 